Next we have starter. There's a lot that goes into the starter, okay? First things first, let's figure out how we're gonna snap our line, all right? If you're just starting out, like on something this size, I wouldn't snap a line. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get this roughly three quarters of an inch, maybe an inch overhanging that gutter apron, okay? The minimum is a quarter. So if you've got if you've got a really wavy building and it comes out in the middle to be right, right here, right there, about a quarter, then that'll be okay. If not, you'll have to re-snap a line and compensate for it. But for the most part, most buildings are gonna be fairly straight. You can put it on like this. The tar, the tar line's actually a pretty decent thing to measure off of, but those aren't always accurate. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take this blade here. I don't have any blade out or anything. I'm gonna use the edge of my knife, this corner here, to make a mark. So we're gonna make this mark here. All right, now, we didn't cut that, we didn't do anything. We just scratched it, okay? So there's a mark on it. All right, so we got it just about right here. Same thing, just a little mark. Now we're gonna take uh, my chalk line. Ooh, first, come over here. Now we gotta get a nail in. I don't recommend doing this, but give it a try. Boom, right there, right on the line. First time. Okay, so our next thing is, we have to stagger this starter here. But one thing we have to note, you gotta be careful of this. If I put on, let's say I stagger it right here. Uh, let's say I just give it the, about the minimum right there, right? About six, six or seven inches right here. Now look how big this is compared to my starter. So I lined them both up and you can see this is about inch and a quarter, inch and a half longer. So what that means is, I don't know why they don't make these the same length, um, these are GAF HDZs, but that causes a problem. So what's going to happen is I can start this here. Well, then the next time it's going to be there, next time it's going to be there, and eventually it's going to walk itself in on each other. So what I would recommend if that's happening is to start with a stagger like this, all right, where your shingle is going to be hanging over. That way it gains back towards this way. What you're going to have to do is... You're gonna have to watch. You're gonna have to watch your nails, right? I know that there's not gonna be a nail anywhere on this piece, so I can nail super low. But in the meantime, you can tack them here or do whatever you want, so that you can make sure that when you put your shingle up, eventually you don't have it landing like this, right? Because that's that's a problem. So we're gonna take that clean there, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna send this. You see right down here. About the tar width again, I usually call it about three quarters or five eighths. Send that all the way down to that bottom. And we're gonna do the same thing up here. Some, some people use their finger. A lot of times I'd rather just come up here, cut this just short of the ridge, and then check it out for myself. So now you can see I've got a place to look. See that? So I could, I could see that right there. But that's gonna be okay. All right? So we're gonna give that a send. And what I like to do, a lot of people don't do this, but I like to give this a little bit of a miter there so that we expose more of this tar line, okay? Because if this was on, not that it's that serious, it's really truthfully not. I just do it because I like to. Now, you see all of this tar here is on no, no tar to tar contact. Now, everything's tar to tar contact, okay? It's not a must, it's just something I enjoy doing. Okay, so I'm gonna finish putting the starter on. You see, I'm leaving a space right there for where that, uh, for where that, uh, what's it called is, that seam's gonna land. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. All right, so when it comes to nail patterns, there's plenty of different types. There's the four nail pattern, which is pretty much, which is the mi minimum on any architectural shingle. And that would be one inch from the end, roughly even space. These ones are a little closer than I'd like, right? So that's the one pattern. Now, if you're gonna do a five nail pattern, 
we can see where these are going to be. I would do one inch from the end, skip over just a little bit. Technique, we usually got a seam about seven inches, seven, eight inches. So you don't want to nail near that seam. So you can technically just shoot a bunch of nails through here usually. I tend to follow roughly the same pattern I would use when I'm shingling gables, or valleys, I'm sorry. And I, what that is, is I leave space here as well in case you have to backstep a valley that's a little more advanced, okay? So now, we're gonna do the six step, or the six nail method. One, evenly spaced, one, two, three, four, and then another one. And that adds up to six. So those are the, those are the nail patterns, a lot of people, I five nail, a lot of other people five nail, just look at YouTube, there's a lot of people that five nail. Just because there's not a pattern for it, doesn't mean it's not a lot. Neighbors gotta love that on a Sunday. Take off this damn pouch now that I'm shangling. Hell yeah, should have been done that. All you really need is a knife. If you got a good, good gun, you shouldn't need the hammer too much. All right, just keep her close. And then, let's get rolling. We've got GAF, HDZs, bark wood. I got a straight blade here. That's what we're cutting with. All right. So what I do is usually give these a little flap. You hear them break apart. All right, and that way they're not sticking together. All right, so boom. Our first course, we're just gonna set it up. We're just gonna set it up nice and flush with the starter on the bottom and the starter on the edge. Now this is important, and you'll see especially why on the next side, but you never want this hanging over because seeing the little bit of this is better than having a piece that hangs over because then when you're looking up from the ground, you'll see little stragglers, okay? So we don't do that. See that? You don't want to see stragglers. Not quick enough on that one. All right, so we're ready to go. Look for damage on your shingles. All right, don't install stuff that's not or that's damaged. All right. Now, our one in, one nail from the end. Now, also these are HDZs, so I can nail anywhere in this line. They have a special whole thing going on. Okay, I'm not going to explain it. But usually, on pretty much any shingle besides HDZ, you have you have about this much of the nail strip to let to nail in. Okay. Now the reason being, right here is called a common bond. Right? This is a laminate shingle. This part of teeth that you see is separate from this part. So they laminate them together. So usually we would nail right here and that's what holds the shingles in, okay? So if I'm nailing high, that doesn't mean that you can do that on your shingles. You're probably gonna need to put every nail about right there. See what I'm saying? Almost every nail is gonna have to go through the common bond unless you're using HDZs or there might be one other thing out there I don't know about. All right. Now for this, what you guys are going to want to do, I'm just going to show you guys my way. You know what? Let's not show you my way because someone's going to screw up, cut the felt. So what I do is basically a knife away, right? A knife plus, plus an inch, okay? You want to hold this away so you don't grab the felt with your hook blade. And you're going to pull straight down as straight as you possibly can. Now a lot of people would say, you should have hung this over and cut it off this edge. Well, not after I installed it that slow. What I could have done is flip, flipped it upside down and done that same thing. In my eyes, it's not important. Uh, if you're allowed to do that near the rakes and around pipes, then it's just fine to do it right here, okay? So, send it. Don't forget to skip a little bit for your next one. You gotta do that, even on your, um, even on your pieces when you're building your rake here. So, then we gotta do it here. See, what I could have done was, I could have just put it here and then just made a knife, made a knife cut right here. Not really my way of doing it. Okay. And then, oh shoot, I flipped it upside down. That was dumb. That really didn't work. Um, see, I like doing stupid stuff. And then you just put these on. Bam. And look at you got a pretty nice even stair step. You don't want to nail too close to here. That was pretty close. It almost went through the bottom of this drip edge here, which is a big no-go. Because there's that little lip you can nail through. So alright, you see we got a nice decently straight line down here. 
Time to move on. What I normally do is hold it down like this, set that there. Oh, just like that. What I do is I'll set my gun here, give this a send. I'm running out of pressure, so. That was a little too cool. All right. Now we're going to be at the finisher. This is the part that gets a lot of people, okay? So what I'll normally do while I'm up on the roof, I'm just going to demonstrate so you guys can see, is I will either try to go like this, keep it up a little, and I'll mark the bottom just a, a smidgen in, and then I'll take it over here, and I'll just cut this like that. That's probably what I do almost every time. Right, and then I got this. You got factory to factory, which is, like I said earlier, preferred. And you give it a send. Oops. Oop, coil. All right. Now, a lot of people, they hit right up here. I'm going to show you guys something. We'll go ahead and put a nail there. Let me turn that compressor on. Sorry, I had to fill up the compressor. So here's what I do from here on out. If I butt these shingles. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna be uh, paying more attention to is this perfectly square than you are is this on the line. Because right now you can tell I'm probably just slightly below the line. Take a look under there. I'm slightly below the line. All right. Now that's gonna help you keep these brakes straight. Okay. Now, Here's the reason I wanted to show you guys. Oh, that's a shiner. Let me show you how to fix that in a second here. But you see that nail I put there? A lot of people say you gotta nail your headlamp or whatever. Look what's right there. A nail holding the starter in the same exact place, okay? So I'm gonna show you how Hillbillies fix that shiner because we're in a video. Now you can go just like that. Boom, she's beautiful, right? Okay. Now that's, pro <laughs> that's probably how you should not fix it on your own house, okay? Now you can see here with how big this is and how big my head laps is, I'm about to run short. There's gonna be a seam that lands about right here. So, so as you can see, this piece here is just too close to this edge, right? I can't put a piece in that big, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this off wherever there's not a nail. So we gotta look under there. And usually I do leave a little more of a space here. That was a big point I wanted to make in this video. I'm just going to make a cut somewhere in here in between those nails, wherever's got, that's enough of a space there between this seam and that seam that this is not going to cause a leak here. So we're going to go ahead and cut that. All right. See, now this is what I was talking about. You're going to have pieces that aren't factory out in the end anyway, because I'll tell you what, this right here is a hell of a lot better than having that little four inch piece on. And I know a lot of you would have just put it on. So. Now we, we really have to watch our nailing here. And when you have an ugly cut like that, like I did, you can just overlap it a smidgen like that if you want, or you can clean up the cut. I usually just hit it with a little bit of that, okay? Now we really have to watch our nailing here, right? I know I can put one towards the end and I can put one here. Now the reason being, you have to pay attention because you don't want this, now that your nail pattern's messed up, you don't want to put a nail right here and there be, and there be a uh, seam there. So what I'll do is, if I'm ever confused, I'll put a piece up. Typically it's two close nails and then you skip though. Oh my God, again. We're gonna show you how to take care of that one more time in case you missed it the first. Here, I'll, I'll even show you the, I'll even show you the extra one. What you do, since it's in this area here, rather than taking that ugly part from the top of the shingle, you come right in here and you hit it with one of them. All right, and now we just, we find that factory side. Right there, something like that, right? And you just, you just pop that girl on right there, like that. Okay. Oh God, throw me on video, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me show you guys what I do for this cut now. God. 
<laughs> Sorry. So we're gonna put this on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna expose the starter with a little seam here. And I see where that is. So here's how I cut my rakes. You're gonna throw this on here. I always leave myself, you see how much space there is there? About an eighth, not even. You're gonna run your knife right down. You get a knee on this when you're up on that roof. You run it right down that piece, okay? And I'll get up on the roof just to show you, okay? On this little steepinator. There you are, okay? Now I forgot to put one up top. So let's go ahead and do that. You see when you finish making that stair step, your piece just continues, right? You just start with a full now. Now on this one, it's okay to have shiners. What I'll do a lot of times, if you guys are really concerned about getting, this is another way I see a lot of people cutting them. If you want see factory on factory. Okay, and look how that shiner turns out. Homeowner who? Gonna, can't see it from my house. Just kidding. That's not the right way to go, go guys. All right, now for this, you hook this thing on, you give it a run. It doesn't matter if you cut the paper, because a lot of times you cut the ridge bent. Here, I have cat coming through there. All right, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come through here. I'm gonna split the difference, okay? This is what someone on YouTube told me to do. Just make a mark on them shavings. He said that'll actually hold your uh, that'll actually hold your chalk line too. I don't know about that. Do the same thing over here. I'll just make a little score and cover that up. So let's try old YouTuber guy's way. Put that. Happen to have a knot. It might actually work out. There we go. Now it's a short run, so probably. Boom, we got a nice line. Not even a bird could tell. Now what you're gonna wanna do, is I stand on the opposite side that I run, okay? And you're gonna wanna start like this. By taking your knife and cutting right along that tar line. Save the shingle side, because you use that later at the end. Okay, what you're gonna do is pretend there's shingles on this side. You're gonna nail this on. All right, what I do, I get a stack onto my feet. I got my tippy toes on the edge right now. Get that nice and square, two nail, and now that's gonna seal right there on that edge. And then when you're putting these on, you go just past the tar line with the point and then you just get it on and go depending on the pitch you can get away with the one of them a lot of times you'll have to do it like this watch that thumb Then you go ahead with one more this way. Opposite direction. Doesn't matter how close it is to the end. I used to uh, I used to do two back just because that made me more comfortable, but really it doesn't matter. So you're just gonna cut here close enough to expose that tar line. That way you got two tar lines, and then use that piece that you cut off. Usually I'll put the clean side, like for example, if the house is that way, I'll put the clean side this way. The house is that way, I'll put it that way, hardly matters. There's one guy who actually told me that's how you finish that, and then what you do is you seal these with uh, you know, quad clear or something. Another guy on YouTube told me to cake this and 
and uh, roofing cement or something along those lines and go ahead and just squeeze this on and set something on top of it for a while while you're roofing or cleaning the ground or whatever and that this would just stick on its own and you wouldn't have any exposed nails oh yes <laughs> Oh, go, yeah, put your feet on the gutter. You know you can get it. <laughs> okay, don't tell where it's at, right there? <laughs> yes. Oh. There it is. Hook it, baby. <laughs> Work that shit. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. <laughs>